Good morning, Titans. Today's Thursday, May 29th, or in other words, the last day of school. I'm Lexi Hope. And I'm Brooke Herrick. I can't believe this will be our last show. I know, this year went by so fast. It really did. Well, for the last time, let's get started with today's show. On Friday, with the rest of their 2014 senior classmates, two graduates will be honored with the title of valedictorians. Stephanie Alanis and Alex Messicar have the story. Becoming a valedictorian requires hard work, determination, and involvement in the community. Seniors Brad Davis and Justin Short have achieved this title in becoming a valedictorian. I just kept taking the hardest classes I could just to keep me interested in school, keep me engaged, and um, through that process I just ended up getting a very high GPA now, and I just was doing as much as I can to reach my full potential and that put me in this position just through you know my perseverance. Achieving valedictorian wasn't something Justin Short had planned when he came to high school. What started as a challenge, Short ended up at the top of his class. Justin Short really doesn't need anybody to motivate him. He's one of the brightest kids I've ever taught. Uh, I knew since the first day he was in engineering he's gonna do something special. And his work has always been top quality. He gets along with others. And he's very bright, and he's actually a very funny guy, too. Justin wanted to challenge himself by taking all AP classes. His first semester, he took AP Gov and Honors Physics. This semester, he is in the process of taking AP Literature and AP Statistics. Short also maintained a grade point average of 4.67 throughout his years at Antelope. I just was taking the hard classes because they kept me interested, and, you know, my parents, my teachers, and probably partly myself just... I was motivated enough to keep going and keep working at everything I was doing and not just give up. So I ended up just maintaining a high GPA like that. You know, obviously there are stressful times when like, okay, I probably need to study for this test and things like that, or else I might, you know, end up with a B. And at some point, you know, if you've never gotten a B before, you probably want to keep that going as long as you possibly can. So it was just a constant process of ne never giving up and having to constantly work at it. On top of excelling at academics, the valedictorians must be a well-rounded individual. Brad Davis played sports and attended a few clubs on campus. They choose valedictorians and salutatorians based off grades and extracurricular activities, but mostly grades. So me and Justin Short had the highest GPAs in the school. We were tied, so they made us co-valedictorians. And we both participate in extracurricular activities and sports too. So. Brad Davis, uh, the thing about Brad is, you know, got to kick him around a little bit, but Brad does excellent work. Um, I always tease Brad when he's got power tools, he cuts the straightest lines I've ever seen. And I always call him uh, Surgeon Brad because his lines are so perfect. The road to becoming a valedictorian is a tough one. However, these students have achieved it and have many successes in their futures and we wish them well. This has been Alexander Messiker signing off for your Channel 5 Titan TV News. If you took a photo at the Music Festival photo booth, the pictures are available at musicfestivalphotobooth.shutterfly.com. Attention students interested in computer science. We will be offering a new course next year, Exploring Computer Science. If you are interested in signing up or have any questions, see Assistant Principal Mr. Tino Guzman. The 2014-2015 Athletic Packet is available on the school website and in the front office. The last day to turn in your packet for the upcoming seasons is June 5th at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. You have, may have noticed some random polls in the front, but why are these polls here? Alex Bittner has the facts. With an apparent increase in school-related shootings across campuses nationwide, legislators and school officials are taking safety measures to better protect students and staff from various threats. One part of increased security measures on campus involves better techniques to stop threats on campus. Many of these are already in place, like the campus safety officers. However, new recommendations by the U.S. Department of Education include a strategy known as Run, Hide, Fight. Since Columbine occurred in 1999, um, there's been a heightened awareness on violence in schools. Um, even before Columbine happened, there were... There's still been, there, there have always been school shootings and school violence, uh, but it's exponentially increased since Columbine. Uh, just recently, last week, we had a violent attack at UC Santa Barbara where students were killed and a lot injured. And so the run, flight, the run hide, and fight is a, um, it's an FBI protocol. Um, basically, when you're in, a, when you're in an, active shoot, an active shooter situation, there's a lot of, there's different ways you can react. So, you know, one of the reactions is run. Just like kind of like one of those instincts you have when you're in a dangerous situation, 
you typically don't sit there and, and want to confront the person, you run. Um, the other one is to hide, and that's obviously when we have our lockdowns at our school. You know, you lock the school down, you lock every room down, and there's a specific protocol teachers follow for that. Um, and the other one is to fight, which is the last um, option the FBI recommends in a, an active shooter situation. A more apparent measure on our campus is the construction of a security fence in the front of the school, preventing any unauthorized access to the campus. The fence that we are constructing in the front of the school is a result of us trying to be as safe here at Antelope High School as possible. Um, we are trying to limit the access that non-students especially and people that shouldn't be on our campus have to our facility. Um, before school, it will be open and easy for students to go through just like you normally do. The gate won't be a hindrance at all. But during school hours when we're in session, anybody that comes onto our campus will have to come through the front office to do so. What that does is it guarantees that we know who is on our campus. They get a name badge, they sign in, we know what time they've arrived and why they're here. Honestly, I think the new fence is it's totally unnecessary. I think the kids here are to be trusted and we haven't had any major problems. I don't think an additional fence and like having to walk through the the office would be a problem. I I don't think that school shooting is is something we really have to worry about here. Although I guess certain precautions would be nice. I feel like the school is safe enough as it is. Even with all the increased security, it is important to remember that while shootings need to be taken seriously, they are exceedingly rare and school staff and administration are taking all necessary precautions to ensure the safety of everyone on campus. Alex Bittner, Time TV News. Even though this senior class is only the fourth graduating class, these seniors leave hu huge footprints at the school. Batch Dosange and Isaiah Rutherford have the details on these seniors. As the school year comes to a close and many seniors look to begin their new lives, it comes into question what they will leave behind. Many seniors look back at Antelope High School and hope that they left a legacy here that they can be remembered by. Congratulations to the class of 2014. Uh, I can't think of a, a better thing to say except awesome job. This class is tops in academics. Um, it's the first time in the school's culture where we've actually had ties for some of the top spots for valedictorian, uh, salutatorian, um, in athletics, um, in, in just being really great people. Um, the class of 2014 has made their mark. It's been a pleasure to work with them. I've said this before, but um, I came the last six weeks of their freshman year and to see the growth and um, just what the class has turned into as people. We've got leaders. We've got people who are going to go out there and make Antelope High School proud for the rest of their lives. Different students have contributed to the school in different ways. Senior Aliyah Roundsville has helped the school through student government and ASB helping to create and promote fundraisers, dances, rallies, and overall school spirit. I hope that I've set a good example for the underclassmen and that they'll continue on the hard work and um, just keep getting better from here. Aliyah's contributions cannot be replaced and will be missed, but Student Gov isn't the only way to create a legacy at the, at the school. Senior Max Contreras has devoted a big part of his life and danced all four years in high school, and he hopes that he will be remembered for it. I think the legacy I feel like I left behind was with dance is just not to take everything so seriously. Like dancing, like always go full out, do everything like the best you can. But if you don't, if you mess up, it's not a big deal because you always have another chance to redeem yourself and not to take everything so seriously and just have fun dance because it's what you love to do. So have fun. With it. Another way students have made their mark at Antelope High School is through sports. Senior Anthony Baumgart plays both for the varsity baseball and varsity football teams here at Antelope High School. He has dominated in both sports and even got a scholarship because of football. And he hopes to leave a good influence here and hopes everyone follows in his footsteps. I feel that I left the legacy of that everybody has to compete. To be the best, you have to compete and work hard and don't take anything off. So I feel like I left that behind because I tried extremely hard every single play, every single chance that I got to. Um, I hope that legacy continues here because I worked really hard on it and if I know if the guys behind me work on it too, that they'll be excellent in the future. 
Another person who has made a major impact in sports is Caroline Culpepper. She has commuted a lot of her time to swimming and has definitely made a bit, big impact on the school's team. My legacy at Antelope High School was swimming all four years and I had a great time. It was very successful and I hope that the swim team can be even more successful in the future. To all the seniors here, thank you for your hard work. Antelope High School will always remember you. Signing off for the last time, Batch Assange, Channel 5, Titan TV News. With all the different classes on campus, one class seems to attract students to join every year. Anna Farshitska and Sean Harry have the details on Ceramics 4. During the first three courses, their passion for ceramics grew and evolved, making them continue into a higher course. Being able to continue on to Ceramics 4, they find new challenges to overcome. Ceramics has been a growing program on campus, but for five students, ceramics is their newly found passion. For Ceramics 4, there is no full Ceramics 4 class, so it will get mixed in with other Ceramic 1 students. There are many different ways to making a project more vivid and unique, such as the coil method, clay slabs, and throwing on the wheel. I started the wheel at the beginning of this last semester, and I've noticed that it's kind of difficult, like it wobbles a lot, and it's hard to get centered, but, um, but eventually like you get the hang of it and you kind of learn how to get it to stop wobbling. With new projects such as teapots, bowls, and clay figures comes more difficulties. The students learn from trial and error and have come across failures, but also great success. The reason I went to for ceramics is because I had an open period and Mr. Fuji just like encouraged me to go. And at the beginning I didn't do really well, but then Mr. Fuji really helped me. Not only is it a challenge for the students in Ceramics 4, but it is also a challenge for Mr. Verilman. Ceramics 4, uh, the stu it's mainly a student class so they get to choose the projects that they want to do. Ceramics 4 students may take these skills they have obtained during the program into future art careers. For the last time, Sean Harry, Titan TV News. Well Titans, for the last time, that's all we have for you this year. It was a great four years and I really hope you all enjoy your years to come here at Antelope High School. So until next year, have a great last day. And an even better summer.